I'd like to share a few tips on how to find a first job as a chemical engineer. So as a chemical engineer, you're probably thinking about um, a couple things, one of them being uh, money, okay? So being compensated, uh, also finding the right kind of job, something that you're passionate about that might be in the energy industry, uh, it might be in renewable energy, it might be in something like nuclear, um, traditional uh, fossil fuel, you know, so there, there's a lot of different areas. It could also be, um, you know, there's many additional careers that are possible for chemical engineers. I'd like to share some of those with you. Uh, where are the jobs located? And, um, you know, what can you do to get one of those jobs? So um, how do you find your first job as a chemical engineer? Let me share a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, my name is John Hedengren. I'm, um, I work in process control and optimization here at BYU and lead the BYU PRISM group. We do a couple things with uh, you know, computational biology, we do renewable energy, uh, we work a lot on drilling automation, and then on dynamic optimization, particularly for unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, and so we have a variety of different projects. My background is that I worked at ExxonMobil uh, and for about five years, and prior to that, I worked at a smaller um, company, Plant Automation Services. Uh, traveling the world doing projects um, in control and automation. Okay, so that's a little bit of my background. I've worked for a small company, I've worked for a large company, and then now I work at the university um, as a faculty member. So uh, let's just talk about um, unemployment rates by educational attainment. So the more education you get, okay, the, uh, the more uh, money you're going to earn, and the less unemployment uh, there's going to be. Okay, so for somebody with a doctoral degree, for example, the unemployment rate in 2014 was 2.1%, and the median uh, weekly earnings in 2014 was about $1,600. Okay, and so, um, you know, the more education you get, uh, obviously it makes you more uh, marketable, uh, according to these numbers, and also increases your salary. So let's just talk about salaries. Uh, you know, this is a survey of 2015 chemical engineering salaries. And this is, if you have less than three years, this is kind of the range you're starting in for a bachelor's degree. Okay, so for a bachelor's degree starting out, uh, it's gonna be somewhere right around 70K. I think the average is about 68K. Uh, per year. So that's what you could look forward to for a first job. Now an internship is going to be you know lower than that. Uh, again, uh, if you're looking for an internship for your first uh, for, for your first job. Okay, um, let's talk about how to find that first job. Okay, so the with networking, the thing that you want to do is is talk to friends and family, everybody that you know uh, in in uh, that's related to engineering. You don't want to just find the first job that comes along, but you definitely want to expand your network. Talk to a lot of people. Uh, you can go to conferences, for example. Uh, there are opportunities to go to conferences as a student. Uh, career fair happens um, you know, at least once a year. You can go to that and then everywhere else. So you, you also want to talk to people about your interests and capabilities and have that 30-second discussion ready. So the 30 second discussion might be, hi, my name is John Hedengren. I'm interested in process control and optimization, and I'd really like to work uh, in Utah. Um, you know, something like that, or something that you're passionate about. Like, I really want to get into the area of unmanned aerial vehicles, and in particular, uh, you know, work with the leading companies to uh, do automation and control. Okay, so that would be an example of an elevator speech, something simple about yourself, that somebody could take and say, hey, you know, I've heard of something in this area, uh, you know, at my company, I'd like to introduce you to this manager, for example. Uh, the other way to uh, make connections is through the BYU, and uh, if you're not at BYU, you know, there's other uh, databases that you could use um, associated with your school or alumni uh, to reach out. So somebody from B that's graduated from BYU or the university that you attended, uh, they're they tend to be just a little bit, uh, you know, more friendly uh, towards your plight of finding a position, and maybe just a little bit um, more helpful. So I just want to log into that. Okay, so I'm just going to go to BYU alumni uh, database, 
and um, okay so there's a directory here and uh, what I'll do is go ahead and sign in um, now this one is behind a subscription window they didn't want to make this available to everybody uh, but here is the alumni uh, directory so for example if I'm interested in working at a place like Exxon Mobil, I can uh, type in you know Exxon Mobil and then search and then it's going to show me everybody that's in that alumni database. Um, so for example, if I wanted to find somebody that has uh, might be aware of bachelors in chemical engineering that works at Exxon, I could um, in, for, in chemical engineering I could look at this database. Okay, I want to show you one other thing as well to help you with your networking. Uh, I'm going to go to chemi.byu.edu and uh, there's under the undergraduate program right up here um, how to find an entry-level chemi position or internship so just like that again some additional uh, useful tips right here on networking identify companies you'd like to apply to find contacts to help you apply at those companies prepare and optimize your resume apply for that entry-level position or internship and then follow up Okay, so a couple um, things about how to get that first job opportunity. One other thing I want to highlight from this, and I'd highly recommend it, is to go to, um, you know, for example, join the BYU Chemical Engineering Alumni LinkedIn group. There's a link there to this page, uh, and this will bring you to this. You can apply, uh, you know, as a current student, you can certainly join this as well. And uh, right now there are about 900, um, 900 me members. Okay, so I want to just highlight something that um, you know, Hans did. Okay, so Hans applied about seven, uh, well, um, created a message about seven months ago. Hi, everybody. I graduated in 2012, and after three years, I find that due to a reorg, I'm moving on to my next opportunity. Okay, so he just he didn't ask people outright, you know, do you have any positions available? He just said, hey, I'm looking for something. And then he, you know, just said professional recruiters can be a huge asset. And then he said, hey, if you're interested, here's a professional recruiter that, um, you know, that I like. And, and Scott uh, from Huntsman, he sent a note, if you're looking for a work um, and don't mind moving to southeast Texas, send me a note with your resume. Okay, so... There's a connection right there that happened on, on LinkedIn. Again, again through a more selective group. So if you have a, an interest group that you'd like to, to join, um, you know, there might be a, a smaller group of people that'd be willing to share some of their experience with how, um, you know, how to find that first position. Um, you also want to build your own network here through some of these um, you know, through your connections, you have uh, you can build that as you go to these conferences. You just send a note to to link up with um, others, um, you know, and, and look through people that you know. Um, and this this is another way to build your network. So I definitely recommend going on to some of these sites like LinkedIn, um, and um, you know, start building your network of people that you know that you'd like to connect with. Okay, so this is a way to to contact them as well. You can search for example Exxon people who work at Exxon Mobil within your network and I have uh, these individuals um, that I know that that work at Exxon but as you build your network um, you know you're going to be able to uh, have this this uh, this resource this database. Okay so that's another way to do it. Now let's say I just wanted to find out a little bit more you know, maybe apply for a position at Exxon. Okay, so Exxon Mobile um, Careers. I'll just search for that. And it's going to have uh, this link, um, this third link here. And, um, you know, so there's this uh, great website that helps you find, um, you know, a lot of information about um, employment opportunities at Exxon. But let's say I want to find something, um, you know, something specific about a career opportunity. I want to find a position that I can apply for. Okay, then I'm going to come down here to, for me, for North America, United States. Okay, it's going to open up this careers.exxonmobile.com. Say, you know, what are you? 
in my case, I'm a professional. Uh, I'm interested in maybe chemicals. Okay, and maybe I want to go down, you can put all locations, or if you want to be more specific, I could say something like Baytown, Texas. Okay, and this is going to come up with a couple different positions. And, um, you know, so let's say I'm interested in, uh, you know, this uh, pro uh, PhD process research engineer. Okay, there in Baytown. And then on the right here, I can just select apply now. Okay, and here's some of the skills that they're requesting. There's a job description as well. Um, you know, this can feel like kind of a, a black hole for a lot of people. You know, doing a lot of these applications, it's hard to get, um, you know, noticed. And so one thing I wanted to share with this is maybe how to um, really optimize your resume for a particular job opportunity. Okay, so here I'm looking through, um, you know, some of the skills, the functions that might, uh, you know, that, that I might uh, want to have to apply for this. Or a manager that's trying to fill this role, he might go into the ExxonMobil database and search for certain keywords. So keywords are really critical to optimize your resume so that you get noticed through these database searches. So. Let's say uh, this is a real key one right here. Apply principles of mass and heat transfer to concept uh, development. Okay, now this there aren't really any key, uh, you know, unique keywords here, um, but let's just let's just say that was the thing that um, they were looking for. Okay, and so I would take that phrase right there, and then maybe to optimize my uh, resume, I might come in here to my resume. And then in my, um, you know, my summary or my, um, let's go down to, uh, let's just do it in the summary. I might take that phrase and just insert it here, how I know how to do mass and energy, um, you know, energy balances, for example. Okay, and if the manager is searching for that, then he's going to come up with that. Um, you know those keywords. The other thing you can do is if you're limited to one page and you want to put keywords in there that the database search is going to come up with is you could also put them um, up here okay just really really small font like one point uh, font and make it uh, white okay so the the human reader isn't going to be able to see those, but you're going to have keywords embedded in your PDF document that you upload to the database site, and when they do a search, um, you know that's going to come through. Okay, so if I um, had made a PDF, for example, okay, so I have my Microsoft Word, and then I do File Export, for example, and I'm going to create a PDF, and let me just go ahead and put this on my desktop. So I'm going to show you what the database is going to be looking at um, for uh, my resume. Okay, and I'm going to open this up in a um, Notepad++, for example. Okay, so this is what the database is going to see. And it's going to be scanning these, uh, let me see if I can go down here to something that makes more sense. Okay, so it, it's, uh, it's grabbed this, that might be my picture right there. Okay, with all that. Okay, but you're going to eventually start seeing some text. Uh, let me keep going down, see if I can find it. But essentially, you're just putting it in white text so it can be picked up by the database and won't necessarily be picked up. Um, I'm going to go way down here. Okay, so I'm just going to search for something. I'll say process. Uh, let's see if I got this. Control. Oh, boy. You know, this one did not export in a way that you can see the text, but um, there are ways for the database to extract um, that information. Okay, so that one didn't show it very well, but uh, the database will essentially parse your uh, parse your file and and then uh, draw out keywords that it can use to help managers that are in the organization find the right uh, qualified candidates. Okay, so um, let me go back to this. Okay, so now we talked about connections. Now let's just move on to uh, in the uh, alumni database as well. Let's talk about where the chemical engineering jobs are. 
Now this is a survey of uh, about you know over a thousand uh, chemical engineering um, professionals that uh, you know graduate from BYU, and these are some of the industries that they're involved in. Now one of the things to notice here is there's a long list. Okay, so it starts off with you know the traditional chemicals, oil and gas, energy. You've got education as well. Okay, faculty and grad students. Uh, you also have semiconductors. In Utah, you have quite a large semiconductor um, you know, uh, area with IM Flash that hires a lot. You also have aerospace, uh, energy. So those are the big ones that chemical engineers go into. Uh, but look at some of the other ones as well. You have uh, nonprofits, medicine, law, military defense, computer software, consulting, food and agriculture, finance and on and on and on okay so you've got a lot of different ones and I'll just kind of show those uh, so chemical engineers can do a lot of things so don't necessarily limit yourself to an uh, let's say the energy industry is down a particular year uh, because of low oil and gas prices okay so that one might be down but semiconductors might be up aerospace might be up and so on. So it pays to kind of branch out and look at different um, industries. One of the things I want to show you is of those, um, you know, thousand people, I would just want to show some of the uh, logos of the companies that they're working for. So these are some of these you might recognize, um, and they're kind of in alphabetical order. Um, and this is about a fourth of the different, you know, alumni uh, players that are there in the in the list. Um, that we extract, and these are some of the companies uh, that they work for. So I'm just going to scroll through these, um, you know, really quickly. Okay, and uh, you know, chemical engineers can do a lot of things, from the food industry to energy, uh, to the auto industry, um, semiconductors. Just on this one slide, you see a lot of different industries. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I'm into the G's and the H's and the I's. Okay, and on up through. Okay, so just a lot of logos for companies that BYU chemical engineers are working for right now. Um, and, okay, I'm just going to go a little bit faster here. Okay, there they are. This is just a sampling of some of them. Um, but, you know, a lot of different companies. The main point is, um, you know, branch out, find. You can find jobs at a lot of different uh, places. Okay, so um, also an interesting thing to note is where do chemical engineers uh, from BYU work? You know, only about 30% uh, live in Utah. Uh, the next largest uh, population is there in Texas and then California, Washington, Idaho, and on down. I want to show a map of where chemical engineers in general work. Okay, so this is some national data. Okay, this is where the chemists are and then the chemical engineers. So the highest uh, are the green ones right here. And so you can see Texas, California, and then back here in the East Coast and um, kind of Midwest areas. Uh, but, you know, Gulf Coast areas is a big uh, player for that. You know, California uh, as well. Okay, so this is kind of where chemical engineers work. And you'll notice that, um, you know, particularly for BYU, uh, there's actually kind of few chemical engineers there. So, um, you know, just plan on looking at other places. You can also look overseas as well. I spent um, uh, a little bit of time over in the Middle East um, and in Europe as well um, when I was working for oil and gas companies. Okay, so um, the other option is if you can't, um, you know, so if if you're also interested in graduate school, uh, you know, after, uh, you know, graduation as an undergraduate, you can, I just want to give a little bit of information about how to prepare for graduate school. So this is kind of another option. And this was, um, you know, kind of um, the, the uh, higher education point there that a lot of students uh, go to uh, graduate school. BYU actually ranks fifth in the nation for number of grads um, at uh, in graduate school. So the source of undergraduates 
that then go on to graduate school. BYU is fifth in the nation. So there's actually quite a few undergraduates from BYU that go on to graduate school. Um, so the, the, the main things uh, with graduate school are to prepare to take the, uh, you know, this entrance exam, this uh, graduate entrance exam or GRE. Um, you know, the main thing with this is, um, you know, you want to study for the verbal and, uh, you know, the analytical sections. Those are the, the most important. You know, the quantitative especially, uh, schools in particular, look at the quantitative section. So as an engineer, you, you know, you're competing on this GRE test with, you know, people that are ta doing English, humanities, other majors. And so you should be in the you know, the upper echelons of the percentiles for the quantitative section uh, especially. Okay, so you can take it online and you can also take it early. Um, you know, a lot of grad school applications have January deadlines, but it varies by the university between December and, you know, February, but most of them are in mid-January. You want to make sure you have letters of recommendation, written statements, transcripts, things like that uh, for applying. Uh, you know, they look at the GRE, they look at your GPA, and they can also look at, you know, prior research experience. So if you've, uh, you know, published something, been a co-author, or worked in a lab, that looks good as well. Okay, you, at BYU, you can also take grad classes as an undergrad. There's up to, I believe, nine credits that will transfer over. So you can actually start early or do an integrated master's program. I uh, just wanted to alert you to some possibilities with, um, you know, national graduate fellowships. And here are the due dates uh, for those if you're interested. In, and, and typically you have to have about a 3.9 plus GPA uh, to be competitive for these national ones. Um, you know, here it says 3.8 or higher, but really um, a, a lot of candidates are 3.9 or higher. Um, you know, you can have between 30 and 60k per year. The, the nice thing about these is it gives you flexibility in terms of what you uh, work on, okay? And so it gives you a, it's a very, it's a very prestigious uh, award that you can receive. I just want to also mention because I, you know, showed some of these um, logos for companies that students go to work for, and also some of the graduate programs that some students go to. Uh, from BYU. Now, this is the chemical engineering department where we send our undergrads uh, to these uh, universities. Again, these are just a subset of of all of them. You know, I went to UT Austin uh, for my PhD. Um, you know, and some of them are you know going to be top ten uh, universities. Um, and there, you want to go to one of those if you want to be a professor someday. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to get to a, a highly ranked uh, program for a future career in education. Okay, um, let me go down here and just mention as well, uh, you know, BYU is also a great place for graduate school. Uh, there might be many reasons why you'd want to come to uh, BYU. They're great uh, faculty, uh, you know, the school spirit, football games, sports, athletics. Uh, we do a really good job of placing students in uh, industrial positions at BYU. There's great outdoor activities. You, know, you might have a, a significant other that needs to finish their graduate or their undergraduate or graduate work um, at BYU. So you might ch uh, choose to stick around. Um, so anyway, that's just a little bit about uh, BYU uh, graduate school. So let me just go ahead and summarize here. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. So, um, you know, how to find a first job as a chemical engineer. Um, really, the main points of this are to, um, you know, network. Um, we talked about networking, uh, you know, just getting out there and talking to people online, other ways to just connect and, um, and find out about um, opportunities. Once you've found that opportunity, you want to make sure you you optimize your resume for that opportunity. You know, let them know, let the company know that you've looked into their company and are really excited about that position and that you have the qualifications um, to, to work there. Okay, and then, um, 
you know, again, types of jobs, they're everywhere. There are a lot of chemical engineering jobs. Um, you know, you just have to be persistent. You have to, the main point I'll just leave you with is that uh, those who find jobs are not those who, um, you know, go to the career fair, they pass out a couple resumes, and then wait for somebody to call them. Uh, most of the jobs are found through this persistence where, uh, you know, uh, professional persistence where somebody's just going to continue following up in a professional manner um, and reaching out to their network to really do their best to find, uh, you know, their first position. And, um, you know, once you've found your first position, um, you know, I found it's it's easier to find that next position if you need to just because your network is growing. But that first position can especially be uh, difficult. And so these are just some of the tips to uh, go after that very uh, first one.